Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It's incredible to have you here because this is part two of getting this 300 pound Chambersburg pneumatic forging hammer up and running. As you'll remember when it arrived, the motor was broken, in my view, completely beyond repair. And so what we ended up doing, sourced an old motor. It's on the way. It's going to be a little while before it gets here. We still have to work on the gear to get it to work with the larger shaft size of the new motor. But in that time, I want to get this power hammer, which is currently sitting on machinery skates, I want to get it onto the floor. Let's get it bolted down. Let's get it ready to go. So as soon as the new motor's in, we can throw the thing on there. And we'll be good to go. Before we crack on with the video, I would like to thank today's sponsor. It is their support that helps make all of this possible. And today's sponsor is Crystalborn. It is another brand new role player game, now available for iOS and Android, giving you an immersive experience, incredible graphics, and the opportunity to fight unique bosses, collect exclusive heroes, and fight PvP with friends that you can make all around the world in the game. Launch fully animated attacks with stunning visuals by downloading the game for free using my link in the description. So let's get stuck into some gameplay. Okay, it's into the battle. Here we go. There is the lineup. Oh, they got us. They got us good. But no, we're back with the counter attack. There we go. There we go. Get him. Oh, that's a resilient one. Come on, he's still alive. Come on. No, they're killing us. They're killing us. I mean, this guy's incredible. He's so tough. There we go. We won. Victory. Oh my goodness. Look at this guy. This guy is just awesome. I like the lightsabers. Oh my goodness, that person's got a glowing hot sword. Oh, that's super cool. Awesome get up. There we go, I like that. It's like a futuristic spear halberd this chap's got. Folks, be sure to download Crystalborn at the link in my description down below. It's free to download iOS and Android. Check it out. We really appreciate MZ sponsoring this video. Let's jump back in. Alrighty, I'm gonna need some space. So I'm gonna move the press, move this tool cart, move that stuff, and then work out how we get that hammer on the ground. So we scooted it in and out, moved it around, moved the skates using a sledgehammer as well as this skate directioning tool. And we've got it the distance we want it, it's square. What we're doing now is we're straightening up these skates so they're straight. We want to give ourselves some extra clearance on that back wall so that when we put that motor in place, we're not banging it against the wall to, uh, to do that. Alrighty. Oh, two before blocking, some MDF blocking, and it's time for, time for some toe jacking. So this is a toe jack. I picked one of these up on Amazon. They're really not that expensive. What you see is you have a hydraulic cylinder here. You can push from the top, or thanks to its name, you can pick from the toe, which is why this is unique. And uh, interestingly, the guys over at Temco watched my videos, and they're like, hey, Alec, that's awesome. You have one of our jacks. And they, uh, they sent me a couple ones as a gift, so that's very kind of them. The concept of what we need to do is as follows. We want to lift up one end, pull skates out, put blocking in the middle, then go lift up the back end, pull skates out, lower it down onto lower blocking, lift it up, remove middle blocking, lower it down onto lower, and see saw it down. There we go, it's on the deck. One more timber to go. What I want to do now though, is in these wooden timbers, I want to make a cutout so that we can always get a toe jack in. Because as you saw on the last go around, we couldn't get the toe jack out without using another one. What I always want to be able to do on these machines is be able to put a toe jack in and lift it up without having to get a pry bar on it first. On the Anyang 165, we were able to get away with it by using a pry bar. We just can't for the life of us pry bar this machine well enough. And since it has a wooden base, the pry bar and machine don't really fit together so well because it just cracks the wood. So we're going to make a cut out in the front here, just about two inches deep before we drop it onto the ground. <laughs> yeah. We did it! There we go! That is such a That is a power hammer, hammer on the ground. Wasn't that satisfying uh, noise? Oh, yes. That's awesome. Very, very 
exciting. Alrighty, I just sat down to some lunch and a meeting, and would you have a look at this? That is a one beast of a 15 horsepower motor with a 326 frame style. Look at that thing! She's big. She's heavy. And fingers crossed this is exactly what we need to get that hammer running. What I want to do now is I want to get this pulley off and then we're going to take this motor, slap it on the back of that machine with a forklift. I have no idea how we're going to do this. Lift her up. Should be good to go. Is that it? Ah, ah, there we go. Oh. Oh, there we go. Got a grub screw out. What's better, PB Blaster or WD-40? While the PB Blaster worked its magic, I think it's time for us to introduce you to our newest member of the team, Matthew Hartwig. Hi there. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. It's I'm great glad to, have to be you. here. He is our new production blacksmith, so he's joining the team. He's come all the way up from Sonora, California. Twain Hart. Twain Hart, California. We're excited to have him here, and so you'll be seeing, you'll be seeing a lot more of Matt in the videos in the future, so... Thanks for coming, Matt. Thanks for having me. Please, everybody, give, give Matt a warm welcome in the comments down below. We're, we're very excited to have him here. Yeah, that's, that sucks. Yeah, that sucks. We can put a jack in here, and then just squeeze it out. Oh, phew. All right, so here's what we have. We have two toe jacks, and we're gonna use these to push this pulley off because it is just completely seized onto there. Mine's not moving anymore. I think I've run out of oil. Yeah, I hear air. Maybe toe jacks aren't meant to work on their side. <laughs> Dang it. We could tip the whole thing backwards. That's my next. <laughs> really? Yeah, go, go, go. Oh! Is that, what's cracking? It's wood, fortunately. That doesn't sound good, I feel like we're about to crack the motor. All right, let's take these off. I think we should make a pulley puller, what do you reckon? Let's do it. Okay, we're gonna abandon this technique. It's just, we've gotta use too much force, and pulling a pulley against the housing isn't gonna be good for the spindle, so instead, Matt is gonna make a pulley puller. So Matt's gonna make up the design for the pulley puller and get started. Okay, there we go. It's a cool looking design. We got the drill. I'm gonna put some holes into the concrete. Alrighty, we got all the holes drilled. We've got all of them cleaned. We're ready to put some chemical anchors in on that. But before we do, we wanna try and use the new tool that we have made. Indeed. The pulley puller. The pulley puller. Here it is. One glorious fabricated pulley puller. One inch, all thread. One by two tubing. It's time to pull the pulley from the shaft. Here we go. Come on! It's moving. Is it good? I think so. Oh, oh it's moving for sure. Yeah, it's easing up. Yeah. Oh, it's happening! We Woo! did it! It's happening, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely not the uh, cleanest looking shaft a motor has ever had. But I think it might just go ahead and work. Okie dokie, so today is the next morning. We finished off the day here, cleaning up a little bit, and what Matt has got up to this morning. We got the bolts cut for the power hammer, and now we are going to put the chemical epoxy in, and yeah, get it all bolted to the floor. That's right. So he is cleaning that up with some, some degreaser. We want to make sure everything's as clean as possible. What we're now going to do is take the mixing tube for the two-part anchor epoxy, take the Leatherman Raptors that we sell and are fantastic. They're about one of my favorite little bits of EDC items. Give that a cut. Ideally, we want to work out the actual volume of anchoring adhesive we want to put in each hole. We've done the calculations on how far we need to squeeze this to achieve the amount of fill in the hole. Time to put it in. There we go.
Okay, we've got all those bolts in there. They're gonna dry over the course of the next day or so. I never feel confident that this actually works, that you can glue a bolt into concrete and it'll work. But it's worked every other time. Have a look at what arrived in the mail yesterday evening. FedEx was not stopped by the coronavirus, which means that some tools that we need are here. I ordered this stuff in the last episode. We have ourselves one rather chunky boring bar and one terrifying looking brooch, as well as an inch and five eighths bushing. It's time for me to get cracking on that gear again and bore that hole open so that we can cut a keyway in it. While I do that, I'm gonna actually have Matt put the treadle on that machine. I think I got this trammed up as good as I can. Have a look at this. It's jittering about a good bit, but it's mostly within about two thou. And then across to here, it's nice and square up with it, and again, here it's about two thou as well. And I'm about as confident as I can be, that's as true as I can get it, because it is not perfectly round. This thing has been beaten up, had a hard life, might not have been made exactly right. This measurement here is two thou, one thou, zero thou. I wish it was better, but I think it's now time to start cutting. And as I cut, I'm gonna periodically keep checking that I'm not bumping it out of alignment from the forces of the cutting. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah! We got ourselves one glorious shaft in one accurate hole. Whoa! And there's nothing weird about that. I'm gonna clean up that a little bit. I'm gonna clean this out by putting it in the ultrasonic cleaner real fast. So Matt did a fantastic job of hooking up the treadle and getting it all sorted, which is very exciting. Look at this. We now have a treadle that works. Very nice height on the treadle too, so we can get both feet on the ground. You see it has this handle here to be operated by a, somebody else, which we're not really having to do. As you can see, we're joined by Will. Hello, I'm back and I'm coronavirus free probably. Matt and Will are gonna be looking through this whole machine and giving it the once over, cleaning things, and learning where we need to maintain it. For example, here on the side of the machine, there's this little hole, and as you see, Matt has found and cleaned off a little grease zerk in there, so that we now know we can grease it right in there. There's also one here on the side. But what we wanna do is we wanna see what else is going on in here, so we're basically gonna clean it all out. Back here in the gear part of the machine, there's all sorts of goop and crud down there, and so we're scraping it all out. I guess they're scraping it all out. Doing an admirable job too. So that once it's clean, we can work out what we need to do to make sure that we keep it running in as good a condition as possible for as long as possible. Okay, folks, I'm gonna interrupt us because I wanna let you know that we're gonna have more grinders available for sale on the 27th of March. There's another shipment of grinders in all the way from Australia to here. As you know, we did pre-orders the last time we sold the grinders and we have almost all of those pre-orders out to their customers in use. In this is the last remnant of those pre-orders as well as some grinders that are gonna be available, as I said, March 27th, so stay tuned. Okay, back to the work at hand. Okay, so I wanna get this and see how it fits on the shaft. Interestingly, that keyway looks like it might work with the key that's already there without us needing to broach it, which would just be such a beautiful surprise. So I'm going to clean up this shaft by knocking off the keyway, getting rid of all the rust, making it look good, and uh, then we're gonna see how this fits. So we think this will fit? I have no idea if it's gonna fit. I don't think we're gonna need to broach it. Oh, we're so golden. This is good, we don't need to rebroach it. The key might be too wide though. Hmm. But it's super close. It's just so barely too tight. There's nothing that I wanna do less than put this back in the four jaw. 
But regrettably, I think it is the only mature decision. Around me are familiar faces, worn out. All right, so let's see if she goes on this time. I really don't want to have to put it in the front. Oh, yes! That's what I'm talking about. I'm trying to feel for any play. And I'm just thrilled with that fit up. Now let's try the key. And it was but a miracle. Next step is we need to get the micata back on this, get those rivets back, rivet it all together, put it onto the motor, get it wired up, and by goodness, turn it on. Hmm. There we go, look at that, that is a grub screw in our gear. Will is doing a quick run to the steel supply, getting us some 5 16 rods so we can rivet these two together. Let's go time. Ow! Oh, my fingers. So, tongs, torch, drop, hit. Love it. This is it. We're about to have the hammer up and running. So, we're gonna wait for these to cool down. Great idea, Will. Putting a little heat on the heads. That works awesome. We're gonna cold rivet the other side, and so that's a little less exciting, but gonna it's cool gonna work. Down. Okay, time to rivet. So here we go, the moment of truth. All together, will it go? Oh, yeah. Come on! There we go, gentlemen. Next step, this motor needs to go on the back of that machine. Look at that! Yeah. Oh my goodness! Oh, oh my Wait, All right, we've got that grub screw tightened. This is tightened to the shaft. Next step is we need to make sure that we get the motor completely square to this gear so that we don't damage our drive gear prematurely. So, just gonna take some doing. We wanna damage it later on. For the last day, Will has undertaken to completely fix this Manzel oiler. <laughs> don't, don't tell me it's not working, Will. It's just flooded. Is that not good? No, it's not. Okay. Well, I was going to give you all the good news that he got it fixed and running. I've only spent like nine hours working on it. In other good news, our electrician is here and has done an incredible job of wiring this up. And it is almost go time. We have an on switch. We have cotter pins in place. It is ready to go, and the excitement is huge to hear this thing turn on for the first time. This is it! I'm gonna get ready to turn it off if something bad sounds like it's happening. The Chambersburg 3CH. <laughs> Alright, let's see what it does to a piece of wood!
That motor is dirty. It's putting out a lot of dirt. The motor runs though. The machine runs. It hammers the thump when that thing hits. You can feel the impact in your chest when this thing hits. This entire two foot section of slab, you can you feel this thing. It's like a sponge. One downside is, is that we have hit the top with this, which means when you're running this thing, what you don't want is so much air to come into the underside of the cylinder that you throw the ram up to the top of that cylinder. And uh, twice, in kind of, you know, getting a feel for it, we've thrown that ram to the top of the cylinder, and you know that happens, because instead of hearing, you know, woo, 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 you hear, you know, bang, 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 hook, conk. <laughs> Knocking the top of it, which isn't good. Knocking the top of a cylinder is not good. Hopefully, adjusting the valving uh, will be able to solve that issue and not let that happen, because my guess is, if we break that, that's gonna be a whole lot more than a two-part series to fix. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't, so that you can see us forge hot steel on this very soon. It's a thrill to bring you along this journey. I'm really, really happy that we've got it up and running. I'm hugely grateful for everybody that was able to give us help with advice on the motor and this whole thing. I'm fortunate to say and very grateful the seller gave us some money for the motor and helped us out getting this thing back up and running. So I'm very grateful about that and I'm thrilled. Thank you so much for joining us.